So the next thing I want to do is get the boundaries to show up again. Remember we had these boundaries and the ship would bounce off of them. Let's get that data down to the render so the render can render the boundaries for us again. In the last video we made this initialize ship function. Uh, consistent with that, I'm going to say bool send boundary data to renderer. Render -er 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 -er. Uh, I'm not going to say initialize boundary data because there's not going to be a shutdown with this. And when I see an initialize, I'm looking for a shutdown. Okay, I'm going back to here. Remember in the last video, I said, oh, okay, we have render initialize input game clock ship. And then backwards, ship, clock, input, render. I like that. Uh, but I want to say set, send boundary data to renderer. Okay, same thing here again. But there's not going to be a shutdown that goes along with that. So if not, send boundary data to renderer, return false. And then let's actually define this function. I'll grab the declaration here. Go down to initialize ship and... Do shift tab. My game, my game, con con, and curlies. Let's go grab the boundary data from my GL window, not CPP. There's the boundary verts, the boundary indices, and I'll paste that right there. Go back to my game, and just like the ship, I want the uh, arrays here as defined as part of our my game. I remember I went through the struggle of making the static data just out in the data segment, but we'll, we'll make it part of my game as well. I hate to copy and paste. You've seen me screw that up so many times, but let's roll with it. I'm gonna highlight all of this. Control H, and everywhere I see ship, I want to replace it with boundary. Uh, Look in selection, replace all. Should be good. Let me highlight to this. Control Shift U, Control Shift U, Control Shift U, Control Shift U. Now, how many verts and how many indices are there? Uh, there's four indices and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Or there's four vertices and then eight indices. So four and eight. And I really should check. If I come up here and muck around with this, one problem with this redundancy, let me put this in a new vertical tab group so we can see both of them at the same time. But if I want to add or remove a vertice, then i got to remember to come over here and do that. And if I don't remember to do that, I'll introduce a bug and uh, such headaches. So let's, let's protect ourselves and just verify that this constant, this constant, in fact, all these constants are correct. So in initialize ship... Let's say, I'll wait down here. You know what? I'm going to put these mem copies together, put these arrays together, and then say if the size of this or the number of elements inside of it, 3, is not equal to this, then we'll return a fault saying, hey, something's wrong here. So if size of ship vert data divided by size of star ship vert data. Hopefully you've seen me use this trick several times before, but the idea is take the number of bytes in the array, divide that by the number of bytes in the first element in the array, and that should tell me how many elements are in the array. And if that is not equal to num ship verts, then return false. And then same thing down here. If size of uh, ship indice data divided by size of star ship indice data is not equal to num ship indices, then return false as well. So we're pushing the check to make sure that this, this, these arrays are equal to the size of these arrays. We're pushing them to runtime, but at least we have something to guard ourselves. Now, I'm getting tired of saying size of, size of, size of, size of. Uh, well, let's make a macro to do this for us. If I say pound define array size a to be size of a divided by size of star a, and then I can come down here and say array size, array size, array 
size of ship vert data. And then what the preprocessor will do is essentially replace this with this. It will copy it will copy this, control C, paste it right there, deleting this. But since I passed ship vert data in where A is, then A will become ship vert data right there. And then same thing with this A. So the preprocessor will just textually patch all that up exactly how we had it. Now I'm going to go back to erase size. And I want to say array size on this as well. Again, this trick only works with arrays, meaning arrays that the compiler can tell the size of. It doesn't work if this was a pointer, for example. It would only give you the size of a pointer divided by the size of a first element. It would probably give you zero most of the time if you did in that case. Anyway, and then I actually want to add parentheses right here just to, to show that, yes, when we do that division, force precedence if necessary, but we're, this is what we're doing first. And then we'll compare that to that. So this is so handy, and I think we'll use that in several places. I'm going to control L to cut it, control Enter to insert some white space. Let's go add it to a helper file. Add a new item, header file, we'll call it helpers. Helpers, helpers, hit enter pound, if and def. Uh, engine helpers H. I'm going to paste that first. Control L, Control VV, pound fine, pound control end, pound end if, and we have our define right there. Control Shift S, save everything. Let's go pound include that. Pound include miscellaneous helpers dot H. So that should be good there. Essentially, with the boundary data, we need to do the same thing we did with the ship data. I'm wondering if we could break this out into a function. Well, we couldn't put this in the function. We could put these in the function, though. So we'd have to param I think we'd have so many parameters it wouldn't be worth it. So let me copy and paste, even though this might be a little bit of a painful copy and paste. I'll copy that. Oh, we need to send it down to the render, too. I don't know. Let's 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 do the copy paste for now, and if it feels real bad, then then we'll fix that. Why is array size not found? Ship vert data is undefined. That's true, because it's boundary vert data. Let's be consistent with what we did with the ship. The data on the stack we'll call data, and then the actual uh, memory, the arrays inside of our game class we'll call boundary verts boundary indices so assert that the boundary vert data uh, if it's not equal to num boundary verts then we got a problem same thing with boundary indice data that needs to be equal to the number of boundary indices so at least that will remind us to go uh, keep these things in sync that's better. The redundancy is not very nice, but at least we have something to to keep us in line if if necessary. Mem copy the boundary. Mem copy the yeah the destinations first. I think that's weird how they did that. Control C, Control V, and this is going to be boundary boundary verts and boundary indices. Move that over to the right and then. Size of boundary verts data and boundary indice data. That's very good. So there's our mem copy, and then we need to send it down to the renderer. So roughly the same thing here. Copy that. Paste it right here. Geometry pointer. Uh, boundary geometry. Add boundary verts. Boundary indices. Why is it important to keep this memory around anyway? Well, if you remember the contract with our geometry, or with our renderer, is when we say add geometry, we keep this data alive for the duration of the game so that the renderer can use that to draw the geometry every time. Eventually, down through the playlist, later in the playlist, I'm going to sh 
go back to the render, have it send its data down to the graphics card. And then after we say add geometry, we no longer need to store the data away for the render, but we haven't really gotten into graphics very deeply. And so uh, for now, we, we need to maintain the memory, keep it around for a while. Ship renderable, we don't even really need to keep a renderable around for the boundary geometry. We just need to send it down and say, hey, draw that thing, draw that thing, draw it all the times for us. And, and the where for this renderable will just be the identity matrix because we define these uh, coordinates in screen space. One last argument we need to add, though, is the render mode. It's GL lines. Do you remember the boundaries are GL lines? And something else I remembered, if we go to add geometry, hit F12 to actually see the definition. When we paint, if I go look at paint GL, we get this aspect correction matrix, and then we, we essentially go through every single vertice inside the geometry and run the operation on it, and then assign the result to transformed verts. Transformed vert size is max verts, but nowhere do we test if we have more than max verts. We just go through num verts here, and if num verts is greater than max verts, we'll actually uh, step out into ram and out, out of bounds and stomp on our memory, especially this is a stomp, we're doing an assignment, we'll assign a memory that isn't ours. So it's not okay to stomp on memory, but generally max verts, I can't even remember what we defined this to be, F12, oh, 10, we'll probably break out of that pretty quickly. So in add geometry, I wanna just say here, assert num verts is less than or equal to the maximum number of verts that we can store. And if this breaks, then we know we need to come back and reevaluate that. Let's see if the boundaries will render. I hope they render after all that work. Let's build started, build failed. Of course, build failed. There's a warning. And not all control, not all paths return a value. Yes, return true. If we've gotten this far, we're OK. And there we go. Ow! One boundary. What's the problem? I'm going to pause the recording and go see if I can figure it out. Yep, copy paste bit me. You probably saw it. <sighs> you know, this is like pair programming at its best, except you can't talk back to me. <laughs> Wish it could. It'd be cool if you could watch as I do this live. And then you say, Jamie, Jamie, you forgot to replace ship with... When, I, when I'm doing uh, coding in front of my students, it's nice because I get like 20 code reviewers at once. That's really cool. Anyway, let's go along here. Let's see, we, oh, there's the boundaries. There's the boundaries. Of course, we're going outside the boundaries, but we have the boundaries. In the next video, let's see if we can get our ship to respect these boundaries.